Morning, peeps. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, uh, let's see what there is to talk about today. I feel like I'm really far from the camera. Have I got this wrong? As long as you can see me, right? As long as you can see me. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget as well to like and share the vids. I got these done the other day. Let me show you. I think they're really cool for the studio. I'm not even talking about the studio anymore until we move in. I feel like I'm like Eddie Hearn when he announces a fight and the fight don't happen. Like, it's going to come, no announcement. But hopefully you can see these. I think they're pretty cool. Tupac and Biggie paintings. You see those? Pretty cool, right? Got those. Can't wait to put them up. Um, got other bits as well. But I can't be asked to get up. I can't be asked. Um, thank you for all the, the nice messages. Um, after I put up the AJ photo in the community tab, a lot of you kind of responded positively, which is nice. Thank you. Um, I tried to outgun the champion. I was short by about seven inches <laughs> around the bicep area. But um, it was a nice interview. It was good. It's going to be on the Zones platform. I'm guessing in about four or five days, maybe a week. But it was really good. Um, kind of talked about everything, just the journey from the get go. Like, why does he still do this? You know, what's the one? You know me, I've always said, get in, get rich, get out. And I was like asking him, like, why, why do you still want to continue to, to fight when you are, you know, you've made millions, you've become world champion, you fought in big stadiums, arenas, and his answer was clearly undisputed. Like, he clearly wants the undisputed fight. Um, but yeah, it was a good interview, um, 45 minutes, then we done some other bits and bobs as well. Um, but yeah, it, it was like, just really cool, really cool. And I think for the DAZN bigwigs as well, it helps me knowing that, okay, Ade is cool with, I don't know, what is he, the first, the second biggest name in boxing? Do you know what I mean? That helps me. Like, if the biggest name in boxing wasn't cool with me, then obviously it's a tough job for me to get those gigs. But if he is, and they can see that, then fingers crossed you get asked to do more of those stuff. But yeah, it was a busy, like, five or six days. I did feel, I did feel shattered at the end of those five or six days. I can't lie to you. Um, I always feel like you need a breather after doing that, what I did. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was good. But we're back. We're back to the green chair. Um, and it's nice to be back. I feel like I'm doing less and less on the green chair and that's not a plan. The plan is to do more and more. So um, stick with me. We are going to do loads more, I promise. It's just trying to juggle everything right now. All right, let's see um, what there is to talk about from the world of boxing today. Um, Conor Ben wants Adrian Broner next. I'd love to fight him this year. Thing is with Adrian Broner, yeah. Like Adrian Broner is a better boxer than Conor Ben, right? Um, if Adrian Broner comes in, like, I don't know with Adrian, I just don't know if it's there anymore with Broner. But if it is there, then that's a problem for Conor. That, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Like, if Adrian Broner is still motivated and still does a proper camp and, you know, does everything correct, that, that, that's still, for me, it's a good fight for Conor, but I think he maybe might just... <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying, basically? Like, he might show Connor some looks that Connor's not ready for yet. I don't know. But then again, look, if you're Connor and you want to become a world-level fighter, right now, it's almost like Broner's become like a bloody gatekeeper for the division. 140 or 147. So, so maybe it is a fight to make. Connor won't be afraid of going to America. He won't at all. Um, and all the, oh my God, the build-up would be incredible because Broner will come with the trash talk and Connor will fire back. It will be interesting that will sell. Um, if you're Broner, you're thinking, I'll take this kid. Like, who's he? Who's he for? And Broner will take the fight, but I just don't see it happening. I almost feel like it's a fight where, for me, it, it makes sense in my head and it sounds good, but boxing politics, broadcasters, it ain't going to happen, is it? It really ain't going to happen. So, I, no, I doubt it. And I also think Broner will fight at 140 next as well. I think he will be disciplined enough to make 140. And I still think the Josh Taylor fight for Broner, especially for Josh Taylor, makes so much sense. I think Josh Taylor, if you're trying to crack that American market, you know, where you are a ticket seller over there and people are like, OK, who is this kid? Then you can't get a better dance partner in America than Adrian Broner. Like he will sell the fight for you. 
and then you'll go and you'll beat him. And Adrian Broner will look at someone like Josh Taylor and think he's beatable. So um, I still think Josh Taylor Broner rather than Conor Ben Broner. That's my take. We, I was thinking though about who next for Conor Ben, and look, they are, or well, I'm hearing whispers anyway about Victor Ortiz or Robert Guerrero. Yeah, I mean, th th there are so many veterans out there that he could sort of pick off. If, if that's enough to then call, your, call yourself world level, world class, I don't know, but there are good veterans out there. Ortiz and Guerrero are good veterans. The thing about Ortiz and Guerrero is that they can still hit a bit and still cause your problems. They can. Their legs aren't the same, right? We know that. And maybe their punch resistance aren't the same or isn't the same, but still, they're, they're not gimmies. You know, <laughs> they're not gimmies at all, especially... Victor Ortiz, because Victor Ortiz, for the first four or five rounds, will be ferocious. He will, wasn't that his name? Wasn't that his name? Like his um, nickname? Might have been, I don't know. But um, look, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, Josh Taylor, I'd, it would be an honour uh, to face Manny Pacquiao, but I'd get no recognition for beating him. No, you would have. So there's no, there's no point at this stage. Like, well, why are we even... What's the want to chase a 42-year-old Manny Pacquiao? No. Nah. You know I mean? It's not like a 42-year-old Bernard Hopkins. You know what I mean? Where they were still like, okay, this guy's still very, very good. I, I'm not quite sure if Manny Pacquiao is that. I'm not quite sure if Manny Pacquiao is very good. And I said this in the lead-up to um, both the Spence and Ugas fights. I don't. I said, I was like, is Manny Pacquiao still a top five welterweight? Like, who, who are they fighting? They're fighting Manny Pacquiao. But in terms of where he is, who are they fighting? Um, and I think we all saw it. Uh, when he fought Ugas. So, yeah, let, uh, can people just leave Manny Pacquiao alone? Can you just let him become president of the Philippines? Let him enjoy his life? I mean, this guy's achieved everything. My only problem is that rematches against Ugas, uh, it's gonna, there's going to be money on the table. Potentially, if he wins that, there's going to be more money on the table for Spence or, or Crawford. It doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon until Manny Pacquiao stops it himself or until someone stops Manny Pacquiao. You know? I don't know. Um, WBC president defends decision to, to sanction Oscar Valdez versus Robson Conceição. This is a disgrace of a decision. This is just a disgrace, isn't it? Like, boxing is just the wild fucking wild west. It really is the wild, wild west, isn't it? Like, you can literally do what you want. This is proof you can do what you want. Um, for those of you that are kind of, what, what, where are we? What's going on? Well, obviously, Oscar Valdez had uh, tested positive. VADA, you know, uh, he was part of the VADA uh, WBC clean program. And VADA kind of um, basically failed a, dr a drug test for a diuretic. Yeah. Although this diuretic, I'm stuttering through this because it's all over the place, but this diuretic, could be used as a masking agent. Anyway, they've done his B sample. He failed again. Now, <laughs> the commission where he's fighting, I can't remember what it's called, the something Pascal something tribe commission have said, okay, look, we're not going to go with VADA. We're going to go with WADA, W-A-D-A, who said that this drug is okay. Like, it's not a performance enhancing drug. Although VADA have said, well, yeah, it is. WADA has said, so they've not, they've said, you know, we're not going to listen to VADA. We're going to listen to WADA and we're going to allow this fight to now take place. That, ladies and gentlemen, is boxing. Um, I could get into it more, and, but I, like, I mean, I'm sorry. There's a red flag over the whole of that Canelo camp for me. There's a red flag. There has to be. How can there not be a red flag? Martinez. You know, he, he tested positive for something. We obviously know about Canelo and now Oscar Valdez. Come on. And for those of you that might be screaming, saying, oh, but it's a diuretic. No, man. I'm not, yeah. Like, <laughs> come on. Open up your mind a little bit more for me, please. Open up your mind. Like, that camp, there's a red flag, I think, in and around that camp. And I think, like, um... I'm not trying to say that everyone's cheating. I'm, I'm not even saying that Canelo's cheating now, but you have to look at that camp a bit more closer. You just have to. You, you, you have to. Look how the boxers have responded. You, like, you go and look at how many boxers have responded to this. Obviously, Cali Plant isn't happy because he's fighting Canelo next, but look at Javante Davis and Devin Haney and Jamel Herring, what they've all said, Shakur Stevenson. Go and check their socials. It's a joke. 
Like the WBC are sanctioning this. Like, oh yeah. So wait a minute. So he, so Varda work alongside the WBC in that fucking clean program. Varda has said this drug is a problem. But yet WBC are like, no, let's still sanction the fight. Uh, Josh Warrington may take interim fight before trilogy with Lara. So I'm going back to that Oscar Valdez thing. This is madness, isn't it? Think about how mad that is. WBC work with Varda. Varda has red flagged this drug. Red flagged it. Like, oh, no, no, no. And then, okay, let's test his B sample. Red flagged it again. So Varda have said that. And then this sanction, sorry, this commission have said, oh, no, no, let's go with Varda for a second. And the WBC, who work alongside Varda, I've said, okay, let's still sanction the fight. Josh Warrington may take interim fight before trilogy with Lara. Um, I feel like there's mixed voices and mixed signals coming out of um, the, Lara, the Warrington camp right now. Immediately after the fight, it was like, you know what? We've got to get the trilogy on. He came on Talk Sport yesterday and it was almost like, well, you know what? To be fair, I feel like it might not happen again now, obviously because Lara's got the cut. That's going to take some time to heal up, whether it's plastic surgery or stitches, whatever it is. Um, and he might go somewhere else and not go somewhere else and revisit Lara, just go somewhere else. And once he's gone there, he's not going to go back there. Like, you know, this is your chance to swerve Lara. Josh would have known how hard the first two rounds were swerving. So I feel like for me, the best option now is swerve Lara. If you can swerve him, fight Kid Galahad, Lee Wood, you know, whatever, fight someone else and avoid that tough Mexican. Avoid him. He's too tough. Um, so I don't think there's going to be a trilogy fight. I really don't. I don't think people are going to be screaming. Fans dictate where a fight goes, right? Fans dictate it most time because, you know, it's the fans that will pay the money, fans that will buy the tickets. I don't see many people screaming for a trilogy fight after. There wasn't. There wasn't that like, oh my God, we've got to see it again. This is a disgrace. It was almost like, oh, all right. And I feel like that will dictate what happens next. And if the fans don't want it or are not screaming for it, it won't happen. It won't happen. Uh, Maxi Hughes, well done for him. Obviously got the job done against Giovanni Straffon. He's now um, signed, I think it's a free fight deal with Eddie Hearn. Um, well done. I've never really understood what that means. If I'm honest with you. Is that like guaranteed money? Like, What does that mean? Like, you're guaranteeing me free fights on Matrim? Never under really, like, never quite got that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, is it, you're guaranteeing me 100 grand every fight? Because it almost seems like, I don't know, like what happens if he gets smashed in his fight next and gets knocked out? Like, is, it, is that it now? Eddie Hearn is, is, is locked in, so he has to give him two more fights at the same money. I'm guessing that's kind of what it is, maybe. Um, Terence Crawford versus Sean Porter. This is um, the purse bid situation. Now, the purse bids were supposed to go ahead today, I think it is. They've been postponed. Reason being, it's almost like they've given them a bit more time to negotiate because it's clear that they couldn't agree a fee with each other. So they're given a bit more time. I guess the thing is with purse bids, and it can get so dangerous, anybody can win the purse bid. Obviously, look, promoter. Anyone, random, could come in and just, boom, here's three million, take it. And that could win. Um, Eddie Hearn obviously wanted to um, put um, a purse bid down as well. I spoke to him on the zone box and showed him, he was like, yeah, he wants to do it. Um, well, that'll be interesting, right? That's a fight that zone would need and want. Uh, Terence Crawford versus Sean Porter on zone would be huge. Um, and that would piss off top rank, it would piss off PBC. And you do wonder if... PBC and Top Rank are like, okay, we need to somehow sort this out so that it doesn't go on DAZN. Like that, the last thing we want is this for this fight to be with Eddie Hearn and DAZN. That's the last thing we want. So you kind of wonder if they're just going to make sure they get things done behind closed doors. Um, Timothy Bradley on Oscar Valdez. This is what Timothy Bradley says. This is word for word. I hope he gets knocked out. Timothy Bradley's obviously made his opinion known on the matters. Hope he gets knocked out. Yeah. Um, Huey Fury. He said, it's my destiny to be at the top. I believe I'll be champion. This isn't even really about that story. I was surprised that Huey Fury is with Sky. Like, I'm, I'm surprised Savannah Marshall. I remember Savannah Marshall was rumoured to be on the last week of Fight Camp. I'm, I'm surprised that they're not with Matchroom and DAZN. 
There's a few others. Richard Reactpour, uh, Lewis Ritson. I'm, I'm shocked by this. I mean, look, good luck to them um, and their endeavours, you know, on Sky. But I, I thought Eddie would have kept or at least tried to get them. I don't know what money they're getting paid and maybe they're getting paid a bit more and look, go and get your money. But um, I think Savannah Marshall is one you definitely want to keep, surely. Um, and Huey. Huey's like a good heavyweight. You want to keep him as well just because Eddie's got some good heavyweights. So I'm shocked that they're not with Eddie Hearn and Matram anymore. Very, very shocked. Um, now we'll end on this one, right? This is Katie Taylor saying she wants to be involved in history-making fights. One sec, peeps. Let me just double check. I've not got any important messages come through because... I'm expecting a couple of important phone calls. Yeah, so, um, Katie Taylor. Yeah. I wonder what you do with Katie now. I mean, there are, and I, I think I said this on the video, she's got loads of options. But I, I don't know how, like, like, okay, even that £140 tournament that Eddie's doing, like, Chantel Cameron could come out of that with all the belts. Is that a huge fight? Is that is that what we're talking? Is that a history as she said, history-making fight. It's history-making in the sense that she becomes undisputed in another weight class, but is that a history-making fight? Like, oh my God, I can't believe this fight's happened. I don't think it is. I don't think Jessica, McC Jessica McCaskill at 147 is a history-making fight either. I believe that Amanda Serrano is a history-making fight. Cecilia Bracus would have been a history-making fight. And I think Katie Taylor would have jumped up a couple of weight classes for that fight, but obviously... Jessica McCaskill beat her twice. Amanda Serrano is the only one now I think that's a history-making fight. I think Amanda Serrano is too small, personally. I think Katie Taylor might have to come down a weight to make that fight happen, but that's the only one. It really is. Don't, and this is not discrediting the other, the other girls, but again, I just don't think Jessica McCaskill is a history-making fight. It, it isn't, is it? Whether it be here or America. Um, just don't think there are that many history-making fights for her. Um, people have spoken about the crossover fights against the cyborgs and the Amanda Nunes of the world. I think I don't, she'll beat them easily. You know? In a boxing match, let's be honest, it'll, it'll be embarrassing for both of them. It will be. As much as Amanda Nunes has a big right hand, it'll be embarrassing. So the only fight really right now for her is Amanda Serrano. And Eddie Hearn's got to do everything in his power to make that fight happen. It really has to be. Amanda Serrano... What, she got like 47 wins, one defeat or something? I mean, she, we're talking, she's a pound for pounder, do you know? That's the only fight that's there for me for Katie Taylor. Other than that, it'll be fights like we saw on the weekend, which unfortunately weren't that great. I mean, credit to Jennifer Han, who had a baby six, seven months ago, but that didn't move the needle, did it? It didn't. You almost want to be against someone where there is that jeopardy. I didn't feel like there was any jeopardy against Jennifer Hand. I felt there was jeopardy against Delphine Pursoon. Jeopardy a bit against Tasha Jonas. No jeopardy against Jennifer Hand. And we, we, we need to see her in jeopardy. We need to see her in a fight which really brings out the best in Katie Taylor. And I think Amanda Serrano could do that. You speak to Americans and they think Amanda Serrano beats Katie Taylor. Obviously, we think the opposite. Well, the opposite, don't we? So um, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's go to work.